Good morning, Bucknutters. It's Tuesday, December 30th, 2014. I am Dan Rubin. This is the Bucknuts Morning 5-ish. I am joined today by Steve Wiltfong uh, because Thursday we have plans and there probably won't be a show. I think everyone knows why. We did not want you to go a week without Wiltfong, of course, and Steve is on the job in San Antonio, Texas for the U.S. Army All-American game. Steve, thanks for joining us an hour earlier on your clock there because I believe Texas is on Central Time. Good morning, Daniel. Excited to be on this week. You are at the game that has become, uh, or at least this year, seems like an Ohio State meeting ground of some sort. Every year you got it a is. Great, yeah, good point. You've got, you got a great story up there now on the site, just kind of the Ohio State contingent and how they've looked so far. Here are the things that jumped out to me about your story. We'll go over who's all there and stuff. But first, Torrance Gibson is there. And I think most Buckeyes in the back of their mind think he's going to be a receiver. What jumped out to me from your story yesterday was how he performed as a quarterback. Well, I think that in my mind there is absolutely no question that Torrance Gibson has all the physical tools to be a really good college football quarterback at Ohio State University. We're talking about a guy that's won two straight state championships in the state of Florida. He's the state player of the year. This year, his team played four teams that won state championships and three teams that made it to the final four in their respective divisions. So Torrance Gibson's battle-tested. And uh, he was the best quarterback on the East team. I was at East practice uh, on Monday, and he made the most wild throws uh, I wrote. And, and he can – throw the ball downfield, and he can put uh, some zip on the football and, and, and get the picture. Hey, Steve, Steve, who are some other up? guys yeah, Who are some other guys in his group? So when you say best of the East, and you're, yeah, you're so saying it's a thrower. Are you saying it's a thrower or is it overall? Yeah, uh, yeah, because it's not like in, in hell in this setting uh, or in a real game. Then you get you add the element of running to Torrance oh, Gibson, no. which I'm yeah. sure makes him even more dangerous as a passer. But on this day, you know, he was – Asked to be, that element wasn't there, so he's just throwing. Well, who are some of the other guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got USC quarterback commit Sam Darnold in his group, who I think's got a chance to be a good player at USC, and he's in a similar situation to Torrance. He's in a two quarterback class with Ricky Town, but you have Sam Darnold, and then you have Drew Locke, the top 100 quarterback who's committed to Missouri, and in-state kid uh, that that chose Missouri and. And a guy that's a, also a good athlete that that put up some good numbers in high school. So he's he's throwing against some really talented players. And uh, on this day, it was Torrance Gibson's day. So the 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 question for Torrance Gibson, I think where a lot of doubt, where a lot of the doubters are at with Torrance Gibson, and I'm not one of them, and I'm not around in day to day. So uh, guys that cover high school football in Florida and, and guys that have been around him. Uh, they wonder what kind of moxie he's going to have, or what what how what his mental approach to the game is going to be at Ohio State. He's still going to have to develop. Is he going to be a young? This is, these aren't my words. This is what people say around him. Is he going to buy into uh, being coached up and and develop as a player? All the tools are there, but is, it, is he going to be a guy that when things aren't going his way, is he going to hang his head, or is he going to be that leader? that guy that you want from the quarterback position that's going to help his team push through any kind of adversity. Uh, and so I think some people question that about Torrance Gibson. For me, I haven't been around him enough to, to know what his mental makeup is, but I just know that he's a hell of a football player. And the few times I've talked to him, I, I, I like what I've seen from him. There's no question Ohio State's got another quarterback coming in in this class that had a hell of a senior year also, and, and so it'll be interesting to see how those two stack up uh, when they come into camp. But for, from my point of view, Torrance Gibson has a chance to be a special player at Ohio State, and he's a guy I really wanted to, to watch compete at the Army Bowl this week, and he did a really good job on the first day, and, and I like the way not only he performed but the way he carried himself as a guy. Good to hear. Definitely good to hear. And I think, like you said, that's a developing story uh, with Torrance. And the other guy who's jumped out, and listen, there are some high-profile names. Uh, Justin Hilliard is there, but not practicing because he's injured. Jerome Baker, Matthew he's actually Corral. Not even, he's actually not even coming. Hilliard is not even coming. Oh, really? Oh, well, there you have yeah. it. So Matthew, Matthew Burrell, Michael Weber. Um, but the guy who's kind of caught everybody's eye early is a guy who's you know, there wasn't a huge amount of fanfare surrounding his commitment, but from what I hear from sources within the program and now from some you guys out there is that Draymond Jones, the defensive end out of Ignatius in Cleveland, is quite a recruit. 
Oh, absolutely. Uh, he's uh, well. We put, we shot him up into our top 100, and I and I think that uh, folks in the Ohio State program think we have that young man under ranked. I think the Ohio State staff thinks they're getting a five star in Draymond Jones, and and they may be yeah. right. Bart, Barton Simmons, our director of scouting, was out at West practice where Draymond Jones uh, is playing on the West team. Uh, He's playing on the West team as a late addition to the Army Bowl. Uh, but Barton Simmons compared him to Derek Barnett, uh, who was a first-team freshman All-American this year uh, out at Tennessee, and a second-team All-SEC pick as a freshman. And, and we were over dinner last night. Barton was talking more about Draymond. And, and, and uh, five-star uh, was mentioned, not saying he's going to end as a five-star, but uh, he was uh, every bit as good as Keyshawn Lucier South, if not better. Uh, in the uh, first practice, Keyshawn Lucier South is the UCLA five-star defensive end commit. Uh, so Draymond Jones definitely uh, making waves. The, the thing with Draymond, uh, Cleveland San Ignatius, they just don't put much film out there. I was at the, I went to the San Ignatius Lawrence Central game this year, uh, so I got a chance to see Draymond play, and, and he definitely played well in that game. But there's just not that much footage out there. Uh, of, yeah. of the young man, so guys are getting a chance to see him for the first time, and and, and he on the national stage uh, showed up here and, and, and was ready to ball. Yeah, I also think when you come out of a program like Ignatius, I just think you're prepared for situations like this. There's not going to be a drill he hasn't seen. I think he understands the need to go hard all the time. So we're ecstatic with uh, Draymond Jones, kind of a sleeper in the class. But but like you said, I don't think in the whack he's considered a sleeper. Then the question that everybody's getting, and, you know, the topic of, geez, the nation right now is Jim Harbaugh uh, apparently going to Michigan. He's apparently there now. We'll have a press conference sometime today. We're taping this as I look at the clock, 8.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Michael Weber, the running back from Detroit Cast Tech, who measured in at 5'9", I think about 220, which means he's a little bowling ball. Just for example, Emmett Smith was 5'9", 209. So five nine two ten. You're looking at it. Michael Weber's built like a little Emmett Smith, but I but I digress. He was once committed to Michigan, went back on that, committed to Ohio State, and now every kid from Michigan who can play is in Harbaugh's sights. I think there was word out there that Harbaugh's already contacted his parents, possibly. What are you hearing down there? I read a tweet from Michael Weber just that was posted late last night along the lines of everyone thinks they know what's going on, but they don't. It's all funny. Um, so he's been thrust into almost the national spotlight here with us, some other kids. What are you hearing on Michael Weber from the commitment standpoint, if anything's come up, and I'm sure I'm sure it has, and also what did he look like on the first day down there surrounded by All-American talent? Well, I'll just answer the second question first so we don't forget to answer it. But Barton Simmons compared him to Royce Freeman again. I was at East practice, so I saw Torrance Gibson and, and Matthew Burrell and Jerome Baker, but Barton Simmons compared Michael Weber to Oregon freshman running back Royce Freeman after seeing him practice. And I don't think Barton was as high on Michael Weber as I was or, or some of the other guys, but after seeing him yesterday, I think Barton really came away impressed with the Detroit Cats Tech stand out rush for over 2,000 yards in his senior year. And some high school coaches in the Detroit area have told me he's the best player to come out of the area in a long time. I think he's another guy that's got a chance to, to improve his stock in, in our rankings this week. He uh, was very impressive physically. He seems to have put on some mass since I last saw him uh, in the late summer, early fall. So uh, Michael Weber's week is off to a great start uh, down here in San Antonio as a player. And from a recruiting standpoint, I, mean, we, uh, I know everyone at Bucknuts read my uh, interview with him on Sunday where he said he was uh, already tired of hearing about Jim Harbaugh. But uh, and he said all the right things about being committed to Ohio State, but he said he'd listen to Harbaugh, which, you know, we talked about last week on the Bucknuts Morning Five. And for me, with recruiting, every time you think you know something, you don't know anything. And, but you and don't, have, you don't have a real vibe on this one, though? I mean, it's no, hard I mean, to get a real vibe yet because it's still early in the game, but I'm saying some guys you know. Well, I, I like Mike Weber a lot. I think he's a great kid, and he's saying that he's committed to Ohio State. And, uh, uh, so that's his stance right now, but at the same time, I, I just wouldn't be surprised either way. That's my yeah, vibe. My, my, you, you know what I mean? It's just if sure, Michael Weber. Harbaugh's right. different. There is, you're right. Different. So, like if they could have hired yeah. any other coach, it would have been one thing. Listen, if the kid goes back to Michigan to play for Jim Harbaugh and he's from Detroit, I mean, 
I'd be upset Ohio State would lose him, but I couldn't blame the kid. Sure. Am I supposed to ask Mike Weber what he's feeling again today on Tuesday when no, no, uh, we, no. talk, we, we talked to him on Sunday? Him. Right. We talked to him on Sunday. And then on Monday, another site reports that uh, Harbaugh has been in Wait, touch there, with. Uh, there are other so sites, then I go there, there are other sites. There, there are other sites yeah. covering the Army game. Yeah, well, it's the big one of the biggest uh, high school football events in the country. Everyone's here, right? I, I thought it was just you guys. I thought it was just you. Guys. No, it seems like it's just no, you guys. No, no. Well, we're I think we're covering the hell out of it, so it may seem like well, it's the best. But was my son but, yeah, so, so you see, you see Weber uh, say that. You, so you see Weber's comment about uh, Coach Harbaugh's camp reaching out. So he, you know, I catch him at the hotel, and he says it was through his mother, and so. I don't even know what to make of that. I just know that I wouldn't be surprised either way. And, and uh, he's yeah, saying he's committed to Ohio State right now, but and he's been a top-of-the-board player for the Ohio State staff the entire recruiting process. That includes Damian Harris and Jack West Patrick. Uh, those, those guys were major targets for Ohio State uh, for, for a couple of years now, and, and I know that the Buckeye staff – Got to be happy to have Weber in the fold, and, and we'll see what happens leading up to signing day. Signing day seems like it's so far away right now when you're talking about Michael Weber, Ohio State, Michigan. Yeah, it does, and it really isn't. It's a little over a month. Okay, there's some obviously we've gone uh, more than five-ish even here today, but there's a lot to talk about. I want to finish off by talking about who else has caught your eye. Maybe talk about what you thought uh, since you were at their practice, Matthew Burrell and Jerome Baker. Well, Jerome Baker walks into the check-in at the Army Bowl, and I've seen Jerome Baker in person several times. I'm sitting next to Barton Simmons. He'd never seen him before in person, and I, mean, I think he was very impressed with the way Jerome looks physically. Jerome gets on the scale, and it's 203 pounds, and the young man looks like he weighs 220. I mean, he's going uh, to Yeah, I'm telling you something. That, by the way, that, by the way, is a quality of an NFL football player. I've covered the NFL, and that's one thing that jumps out to you. They they have a certain look to them athletically, and then they don't weigh as much as you think. So the, the, I was really I was impressed stuff. to hear 203 after watching him play in the state championship team to find out he was 203. I was surprised. Go ahead. I cut you off. Ab- no, absolutely. And uh, he is uh, going to be able to add some weight. And he's not going to lose a drip of that athleticism. And uh, Steve Speck, the Cincinnati St. Xavier coach, Justin Hilliard's coach, is actually Baker's position coach down here at the Army Bowl. And that was the first young man he mentioned when I went down on the field after the first practice yesterday and just said explosive. And then, then just we just kind of let it hang there so it sunk in just how explosive Jerome Baker really is. He's just very com- – Jerome Baker's just comfortable on the football field. You just you yeah. tell him to go play a position, he can go play it. So uh, I'm not saying in this, this setting – I'm really not saying – I'm not saying this in jest. I'm being dead serious when I say this. He could start at Ohio State at every position off except for defensive line on defense. He is I'm a fat, he's fast enough to run a corner. I mean, look at his size. What is he six he measured in at six one, two oh three, did he not? Uh, six one, That's two, like two, two, two three. Enough. That's the prototype for the NFL corner now. He could play he's fast enough to play safety. He's he's played linebacker his whole career. I can't remember a recruit I could say that about and be honest about it. In retrospect, maybe Ryan Shazier could have done it, but I didn't think that coming in. I, I, man, I have a man crush on Baker. But you went up me because I was going to say he could play all seven positions in the back of the okay. defense on the front maybe level. Could, listen, said, you yeah, said a half day, so I, I can't even uh, – you, you went up me. I told you, I, I, this is going to sound – I want him to be the hybrid guy in all sense because – He's just a but freakish. He, but he's, I, I he mentioned it's still possible. He mentioned it's still possible what, that he could play running and, back some at Ohio State. He's so. so good that I think they should just come in and see where they have a hole and put him there because they're going to be so well, talented your, at so many other spots. Go ahead. Dan, who's your, number one, who's your number one player in Ohio? We talked Baker. We talked Draymond Jones, Justin Hilliard, obviously. Are those your top I three guys in head, the state? Gun to my head this year, I would have to say Jerome Baker. I would just just and I and I think the, the the bottom line would be the versatility. I realize we've gotten off topic here a tad bit, but when I watched the Benedictine State Championship game, I don't think they gave him the ball enough, and eventually they just decided to snap it to him and let him let him work. Um, my only concern about him when I see him cackle is he's a grabber, 
Um, he's a pull you down type. But now that I see that he weighs 203 pounds, that's probably why. So I don't know. I'm just excited to have him. Um, and then talk about Matthew Burrell. That recruitment went on forever. There were times when it looked bad, and he eventually chose the good guys. How has he looked so far? I understand he's got a few snaps at center, having never done that before. Well, Matt at least confirmed our intel uh, when he checked in at the Army Bowl, saying that he was a longtime Florida State lean, and that's what I was saying for a while. So uh, when he committed to Ohio State, I kind of felt – well, I was happy for the Bucknuts readers, but I felt weird about it because I kept telling you guys I thought he was going to go to a Florida school. And so – uh, so anyway, he, he said that as he Buck made Nutters up his mind. Know. As, hey, Steve, as Bucknutters yeah. go, if you're going to be wrong, that's the time to be wrong. Right. When, when the Bucknuts win or when the Buckeyes win. Right. So, so, so Burrell, uh, Burrell said they basically ultimately made that decision, you know, in the final week. And, and then, uh, Florida State was a long time favorite, but it was actually LSU that was his runner up. But, you know, LSU was his last visit. So I don't know how much that, that played part in it. And obviously LSU, like Ohio State and several other powerhouse programs. There's a lot to be excited about when you visit a place like that. And uh, But Burrell, uh, from a physical standpoint, uh, he is one of the thicker offensive linemen here, uh, and uh, he's got a tenacity uh, about him on the field. Uh, he, is, uh, he plays uh, ferocious, uh, and uh, he's down here. He's working at guard, and he's working at center. Uh, so uh, trying to add some versatility to his game. Um, but he, he, see, he's another guy that looks like he loves playing, and he's definitely coming in hungry and trying to play very early next year. See, we appreciate all the effort. What is on the docket for today? What are you looking forward to there? Uh, spending a lot of time well, on the Riverwalk at, and Margaritas? I wish. Uh, I'm at West practice today, so I'm looking forward to seeing Draymond Jones uh, from an Ohio State perspective because – you look at, is, is Draymond Jones the number, is he a top three player in the state? Uh, I still love LJ Scott. Uh, he's up there for oh, me. me. Too. You got, you got Justin Hilliard, you got Baker. Uh, but I could see Draymond Jones, uh, moving, moving up, uh, significantly in our state. Right now he's number nine in the state. There's no question that, or no way that's going to hold. Uh, he's definitely going up. But how high does he go up? Does he go to, does he go to one, two, three, uh, four? Uh, you got, uh, Eric Glover Williams is, is definitely, he's in the top five right now along with Sean Crawford. I think Sean Crawford is going to play early, uh, at Notre Dame because they, they don't have a guy like him that, that can play in the nickel. So he's going to play early. Eric Glover Williams coming in at, at, at DB for Ohio State. There, Ohio State's loaded up at that position. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing Draymond, uh, looking forward to seeing Ricky Tom, the USC quarterback commit one time top-ranked player in the country. So a uh, lot to think. Oh, and, and Khalil McKenzie is the best high school football player I've seen in person this year. So looking forward to, to seeing the 353-pound uh, defensive tackle that's committed to Tennessee that's just uh, as sure a thing as I've seen uh, in high no, school I football saw the, to, I make, saw to make it to the league. Him. Yeah, I saw Vine from him at practice, and the offensive lineman was like a nuisance to him. He just kind of fl- – he was half-speeding the drill – and he dominated. So, well, Steve, will be up. everyone will be able to follow that. Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, I mean, he's 353. Some of the guys trying to block him on this level are 280, but he's a, he, uh, he's a guy with those bloodlines. His, his, his dad's the uh, GM for the Raiders, played at Tennessee. I mean, uh, this kid's just a machine. Steve, let's not forget, Bucknoters can follow all the action through the front row. We've got a live thread going there all day. We'll have stories up on the site, so keep it locked in here. That's probably more about San Antonio, Texas, than you ever wanted to know. Have a great day, Pop Hunters. This was my favorite appearance yet. See you guys.